or what isn't even quite a spline yet. I'm going to select it, convert it to an editable spline. Again, kind of go through the similar machinations that I did before. Corners, broken, garment maker. I'm going to make sure that this garment maker has, a, has slightly smaller ones than this one. So you got to kind of work inside out in terms of detail. Remember, a lot of what you're simulating internally won't ever be seen, in some instances anyway. So you probably don't need as much detail. So let's go uh, 1.5, <gasps> which is probably not what I wanted. It's funny that uh, as you, uh, as I tell you guys to to save, that I I do man manage to mangle my scene file to the point where I needed to restart and reload, and it's a good thing that I had it saved. So I've got this because instead of hitting 0.15, which is what I wanted for this cloth panel, I hit 1.5, and as you can imagine, this this piece of cloth's triangles were minute, to say the least, and bordering on real cloth, and would have taken months and months to simulate, even just to get it into position, so I killed the process and started it again. Um, in this case, let's do what I had originally intended, 0.15 so that the triangles here are slightly smaller than the ones on the underlying cloth. Now, if I go into curve subobject, I don't want to be in curve, I want to be in panel subobject mode so I can select the panel. And again, I'm going to make a curved panel, minus 0.2. In fact, actually, let's do minus 0.12. A little bit wider and I can certainly place it where I need it to be. A little bit high. A little bit further, there we go. Something like that. Now I am, just so that everybody knows, I'm running on a, a, a Pentium 4 2.0 gigahertz machine here, so it's certainly not top of the line in any shape or form. Let's go into seam subobject mode, and in fact, I'll turn on that so I can grab that seam and that seam, and I'm going to create a seam for those so that they now will connect. Now, now that I've got this placed again, my my mantra will will hold true again. I'm going to save. Alright, so layer one simmed, layer two placed, and now here's, here's where it gets a little bit where you start having to kind of figure out where you are. I'm going to grab something that already has the cloth effects modifier on it. So I've still got this simulation. What I'm going to do is in object properties, I'm going to add the object. I'm going to add cloth. And it's going to be cloth as well. But with cloth 1, its simulation is done. So what I want to do is I want to turn it into a collision object. Now, considering data is already part of this object, it will stay. And I can set the offset to, let's say, uh, 3 on this one. And the arm is still where it needs to be. So I'll hit OK. And you'll notice it says simulation, simulated frames 1. And what I want to do before I do any kind of simulations, I actually want to select my new cloth object that needs to be simulated because this is where I need to to be. Now you'll see, as I scrub the frame slider, I've still got all the deformation from my original cloth. It's not gone. Now, considering the simulation was set up for it last, you'll notice that I've gotten these unwanted faces again for my second set of simulation, for my second piece of cloth, and that I don't want to use. So I'm going to turn on Use Sewing Springs. And now I can go back through. I'm going to reset that state. So now it goes back. Of course, I haven't reset the state of my original cloth. Again, you get a little concerned. You go, oh my god, I hit reset state. I'm going to lose everything. No, you're not. Depending on what object you have. If I hit it while I was selected on cloth 1, I would lose it. So be careful. Make sure you've got the, the correct object selected. So in this case, I can turn gravity off. I can hit simulate local damped 
It's going to pull these cloth pieces parts together and you'll notice that it's going to push itself out of the other piece of cloth the way I want it to. Stop that. Turn off use sewing springs. Simulate local. Now I've got a second ribbon of cloth set. So I hit stop there. Again, I can turn gravity back on. Simulate local so that this piece of cloth now settles on top of the first piece of cloth. As one might expect, you'll notice it maintains its distance. I'll hit stop there. And again, considering I've got things where I want, I might save again just in case, considering I've got this cloth now layered the way I want it on top of this one. So maybe a second save as. So instead of just layer 2 placed, layer 2 sim local. And now it's just a matter of hitting simulate again to get this one to conform to what this is doing. Now I'm going to stop the simulation. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so now we've got two simulations. And the bottom one is actually causing the top one to deform in a very specific way. Now you may see some interpenetration. You could solve it a couple of different ways. You could add more detail out here which is acceptable, but you know you don't necessarily have to do that. You can always throw a shell modifier on top. And that tends to push that piece of cloth out. Gives it a little bit more thickness so that it'll hide all of that interpenetration. So I could do something like that. I wanted a piece of leather or something along those lines. Another way would be able to use the intersect modifier, and I'll show you a little bit about that in another video. But by and large, now you have the ability to do layered clothing. One piece of fabric on top of another without any problem. And we'll show you, you know, kind of the, the whole point of all of these exercises leading up to building a human character that's got a shirt or a tank top, a coat, and a pair of pants. And that's where all of this and some of the other techniques in terms of uh, animated groups or selecting groups and using those, uh, garment maker techniques, all of that is going to come back into play when we do that.